This case has gripped the greater Philadelphia region for generations. Police detectives over the years have adopted this little boy, working off the clock in retirement and whenever they could try to find his name. For decades, police have tried to figure out who was the boy in the box, found dead, naked, and beaten in February of 1957. His body left in a box off the side of a rural road in the city's Fox Chase neighborhood. A profound sadness is felt, not just because a child was murdered, but because his entire identity and his rightful claim to own his existence was taken away. After decades of no one claiming Joseph Augustus Zarelli, detectives started referring to him as America's unknown child. Even getting a headstone with that name. America's unknown child has haunted this community, the Philadelphia Police Department, our nation, and the world. But with advancements in DNA technology, police requested and received a court order allowing them to exhume the boy's body in 2019. Forensic anthropologist Dr. Washburn examined the remains and was able to obtain the required amount of DNA to apply modern forensic techniques. Then police turned over the DNA to genealogists. We build out genetic networks of the biological cousins of the DNA sample, and we look for where those genetic connections marry into each other, and we build down the family tree. From there, forensic genealogist Misty Gillis worked closely with police to help confirm the boy's relatives. There was a lot of legwork on the detective side and a lot of co uh, collaboration between us on giving them tips on who to speak to and what DNA profiles would help me. Then a birth certificate and further detective work helped confirm the boy formerly known as the boy in the box was actually Joseph Augustus Zarelli. Police tell us the investigation is criminal and ongoing. They're asking for the public's help to reach out if they know what may have happened to little Joseph in 1957. For the investigators, Claudia Vargas, NBC10 News. Police say Joseph had been beaten and they believe that contributed to his death. But officials would not say who they believe could be responsible. Police also would not identify the boy's parents who are both deceased. However, siblings and extended family are still in the area. A Chester County law firm is representing those who have been contacted by police. A lawyer for the firm would not comment on their behalf. Investigators are not the only people who have been following this case and feel a connection to this young victim. NBC 10's Aaron Baskerville shows us why today's announcement has been emotional for so many. How could it not be emotional for anybody that, that cares about human beings? Tears of relief years later. Neighbors who followed the case for decades stopped by a marker in Fox Chase, the location where Joseph Zarelli's body was found in 1957. 65 years later, and emotions are still overwhelming as many waited to learn the four-year-old's name. I can't say any more about it. I'm just, I'm glad we know his name. I'm glad we know his name. Around the same time tonight in a different area of Northeast Philadelphia, a special dinner in honor of the work done. It's a very happy and joyful day that we could finally put a name on the gravestone of America's unknown child who is no longer unknown. The VDOC Society, a volunteer group of retired law enforcement and forensic experts who work on cold cases, could finally exhale. The organization was instrumental in helping investigators solve part of this mystery. It's a day long awaited. We've been pursuing this, including many people who are no longer with us. It's a very gratifying day. Earlier today, NBC 10 stopped by Ivy Hill Cemetery, where the grave marker for America's unknown child remains. It will soon be changed to Zarelli's name. Over the years, strangers would stop by, according to one of the workers who watched over his tombstone. They come throughout the year, but this time of year, you'll see a Christmas tree, you'll see all the different toys. Uh, that they, uh, people bring in for the boy. Uh, it's, it's nonstop. We're told it could take months before a new grave marker is delivered and made. But tonight, at least they have a name. Aaron Baskerville, NBC 10 News.
And this case is the first time the Philadelphia police have used genetic genealogy to identify human remains. The department is now in the process of testing dozens of other cases going back to the 1950s. Those could identify unknown victims like the boy in the box as well as suspects. And that's what police in California actually did to catch the Golden State Killer. Twelve people were murdered and dozens more women were raped over a 12-year period in the 70s and 80s. The suspect's identity was unknown for decades until DNA from the crime scenes was used to create a genetic profile, which was then matched with profiles from a commercial genealogy database. And I spoke tonight with Jim Beidler of the Genealogical Society of Pennsylvania. He says home DNA testing has been a game changer when it comes to these types of investigations. With so many people having done consumer DNA tests, basically you have proxies for well over half the American population represented in the DNA databases. And that's what these genealogists are working from is Beidler points out users of home DNA tests have to opt in to share their information with other users. And in the case of law enforcement, it can take a court order before a company will share information. You can go to NBC10.com to follow our full coverage of The Boy in the Box. This is a case the NBC10 investigators have been looking into for years. You can watch our reports and today's full news conference from police.